She approaches the chariot of heaven. Let's see how she disposes of herself. Mark my word. I am certain the emperor will change his mind. It will last a week. I'd say a night. I say a fortnight. The genesis of this project, Cafe Three Tales of China, is that the Kennedy Center this year is doing the largest Chinese performing arts festival in the history of this country. And they wanted uh, a collaboration between Chinese puppeteers and American puppeteers. Your Majesty, Son of Heaven, I wish to report an unusual occurrence at sunset last night. And it's in collaboration with the Shanxi Folk Art Theater. And uh, those folks uh, made the puppets using their traditional style of rod puppetry. So it's a kind of fun opportunity to be working with all these different artists and uh, learning this uh, new technique of, new to me, uh, technique of puppets. Why, I can see it in his eyes. They sparkle and dance in your presence. <laughs> your ladyship, the royal palaquin awaits you. It consists of three separate stories, one that takes place in the Tang Dynasty, which is uh, about 700 AD. The Lady and the Emperor is a, is a very famous tragic love story. It's our Romeo and Juliet, and it's, a, it's been done in Chinese opera. It exists in poems, in paintings, and all Chinese people know the, the story of the, of the Lady Yang, who's considered one of the four great beauties of China. Who dares to? Your Majesty, the guards demand the life of Lady Yang. Anytime you get the chance to work with an artist who's as talented and as innovative as Ping Chong, it's thrilling. And so Cathay is a real opportunity for us both to work with a great artist and to kind of go in a new direction. Morning, little worm. Morning, Mr. Nam. In the show, we're using both shadow puppets and uh, rod puppets. We are also using digital uh, animation uh, with shadow puppetry, which is totally new. I don't think anyone has done this yet. Little worm! Little worm! The Japanese are coming! Mama! Mama! Little worm! Mama. The Seattle rep audience will be seeing for the first time a new technology applied to a very old form, which is shadow puppetry. Mr. Chuan! Mr. Chuan, have you seen my father? Mr. Chuan! The second story is a more personal, the Second World War, my oldest sisters lived through the war in China. You know, even if we win this war, any notion that the Chinese will follow our ways is a dream within a dream. So it really is somewhat drawn from that. And so you have the three different eras, and with each um, era, you of course need uh, different puppets. So for this production, there must be over 100 puppets, uh, different characters, different scales of the same characters, different perspectives on the same characters, uh, costume changes on the characters, uh, some shadow puppets, rod puppets. So there's a huge cast. Take a peek backstage, you'll see the huge amount of stuff stored back in the wings there. 75% of the puppets were built in China. The other 25% were built in the United States. Puppets are very specific to the styles that people were used to. So there's all kinds of logistical nightmares in, in understanding how to use the puppets and also for the puppeteers to work in my kind of puppet world, which is different than their puppet world. So you have three, at least three different cultures clashing here, but not in an, in, not in an unfriendly way, you know, because actually everyone's been very patient and very wonderful um, when you consider the language issues, the stylistic issues, you know, and the time crunch of putting a show together in America. I don't care what the tour guide says. I want to watch it every day. Do you want to see the Terracotta Soldiers or not? The three stories are also very different in the style of puppet work that's in them. In the third story, which is set in a contemporary hotel in China, it's as, you know, the puppets appear to be like, you know, contemporary figures. Your grandson looks like a successful young man. You're fortunate. He's the new China. The last time I saw you, you were being taken away as a prisoner of war. You know, when we Japanese were bombing your country, I saw something I never forgot. There are three separate stories. But in the third story, there's a kind of uh, tying together of the three different stories.
but I can't elaborate on that because I'd be giving too much away. I don't think that people need to bring a kind of special understanding about Chinese culture to this show, but they will be quite entertained, uh, and I think we'll have a lot of interesting cultural information opened up for them uh, in the experience of this play, which is quite uh, witty and amusing and unexpected. So after our run here at the Seattle Rep, um, we're off to the Kennedy Center and we'll be doing a week run there and then on to the New Victory Theater in New York on uh, I believe 42nd and Broadway. So we'll be taking the show to Broadway. I think art is always about communication and understanding. So I hope that this, is, this um, interest excites people to take more of an interest in other cultures and other worlds. And China is a very rich, culturally very rich and fascinating place because of its uh, long, long history. So I hope that they'll come away wanting to know more and uh, le letting their, their own worlds open up more so that it widens their view of the world.